Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're starting out with two charges, a positive charge of 12 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs and a negative charge of minus 18 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And the, two char the charges are on two conductors that are at the distance of 0.3 meters apart. First, what we're going to do is find the force between the two charged objects. After that, we're going to connect the two charges, the two spheres here, with a conductor, and then we're going to find out how the charge is going to redistribute itself over the two spheres, and then we're going to find the force between the two charged objects again. So here, we're going to use Coulomb's law, where we can say that the force is going to be equal to K times Q1 Q2 divided by the distance between them squared. So in this case, K, the constant, is 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. Multiply that times the two charges, which is 12 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, minus 18. Now notice here, since we're finding the magnitude of the force, we really don't need to use the negative sign. We simply can get rid of it. We're just simply finding the magnitude of the force. The direction is another thing. Then we have to take that into account. So we have 18 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, all divided by the distance, 0 0.3 meters quantity squared. Notice that the coulombs cancel out, the meters cancel out, and you're just left with newtons, the magnitude of the force. So the calculator, we have 9e to the 9th times 12e to the 6 minus times 18e to the 6 minus divided by 0.3 squared equals, and we end up with 21.6 newtons. That's the magnitude of the force between those two charges. All right, now what happens when we connect them with a conductor? Well. Since there's more negative charge on this side and less positive charge over here, the negative charges will migrate towards the positive charge until all the positive charges are canceled out. To do that, we need 12 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, negative 12 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, to cancel out the positive charges over here. After that, there's an additional minus 6 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs left, which will then distribute itself equally over the two, the two uh, objects. So another way of looking at it is this. You can say that the total charge, Q total, is equal to the sum Q1 plus Q2, which in this case is going to be 12 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs plus a minus 18 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And so this ends up being a minus 6 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. So that's the total or net charge when you add the two together. You do that by connecting it with a conductor. So the negative charges will run across. What's left over will distribute itself over the two objects. So therefore, now you can say that Q1 will be equal to half Q total and Q2 will now also be equal to one half Q total. And with that, we can say that this will now be equal to a minus 3 times 10 to the minus 6, uh, that would be coulombs, and this also would be equal to minus 3 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And so if you want to graphically represent that, you can see that at this point, you just have a little bit of negative charge on this and a negative a little bit of negative charge on that sphere. Now we're going to calculate the force between those two spheres. Now there'll be a force of repulsion where this was a force of attraction, but the magnitude of the force F12 will be equal to K Q1 Q2 divided by the distance between them squared. So this is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared times a 3 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Again, we don't care about the negative sign, we simply find the magnitude of the force, times 3 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, all divided by the distance, 0 0.3 meters squared. And so what will the result be now? 9e to the 9th times 3e to the 6 minus squared divided by 0.3 squared equals, and now we just have a small force F12 equal to 
simply 0 0.9 newtons. Let's see if that is actually correct. So uh, let's see here. We have 21.6 divided by 12 divided by 18 and multiply times 9. And yep, that is correct. Those are the two results. So the important aspect of this example is to see how charge redistributes cells when you're allowed when they're allowed to run across a conductor connecting the two spheres and ultimately you do that by simply adding the charges taking into account the signs that gives you the total net charge on the two spheres then we'll equally divide over the two spheres each gets half the total charge and then of course the rest becomes easy using Coulomb's law that's how it's done